Also, Benghazi was also. I'm <laughs> 
你好，你有什么事？呃，有。对，您可以讲一下，您为什么今天来这个活动啊？呃，我就是第一呢，呃，毫无疑问，现在大家，如果你呃一个人 is not blind 的话，你眼不瞎的话，都可以看得到，创普今年的支持率，无论是在华人社区也好，还是在在西裔社区也好，还是非洲美国人社区也好，都增加了。他的机会每个都是几万。几万的人，而且都是自发的。呃，另外一方的这个这个支持者，他的聚会你也看到，就是百般两百。在这种情况下，而且大家也看到了，比如说在中间摇摆州，比如说在爱奥瓦，在 Ohio 这种关键的州，他都支持率都高了。但是突然之间，你看到
在这个这几个原来遥遥领先的州，突然之间变化了，而且有越来越多的证据已经表明有问题了。我不敢说这是多这种欺诈的规模有多大，但是绝对是有问题的。就有欺诈发现了这个东西，大家就需要站出来看，如何保证这个选举的公正，如何合法的计合法的票数。记到，而那些不合法的票抛弃掉，这个是很重、很重要的。这就是我作为一个观察者，我我就想来看一下，就是说究竟这些发生了什么。我也就是想看到啊，两阵对两个阵营的话，哪些人是吧？我都感觉到，就是说这个相对而言更加成熟的人是支持川普这一边，相反的话，另外一方面的人呢，就是说很年轻的，似乎在我们来讲就是说。哎呀，有背面这个，他们背后有这个长胡子的人在支持他们，这就是这个现实。我刚才讲到说，就是美国现在在一个很关键的很关键的时候，很关键的年龄段，可以，因为我生活过不少国家，我也看到这些国家是如何变迁的这么多年。如果美国的话，如果这种基本的大选。都不能保证公正的话，那今后美国还有没有公正？还会有没有这种就是说，就是说法律和秩序？因为司法公正是 law and order 的一个重要的组成部分。如果美国也今后做不到 law and order 法律和秩序的话，这个世界会怎么走？像南非那样？像包括我刚刚碰到很多南美过来的智利啊、秘鲁啊，咱们就是说。哦，还有越南人，他们就知道，他说我们太知道这个社会当初是没有法律和秩序的，这个是个什么个结果？什么给社会、给家庭带来的灾难？我说句实话，我是不希望这种灾难在美国发生。这种灾难发生，对于你们年轻一代，这是将是毁灭性的；对于我们这一代，年纪稍微大一点，其实的话，各样的生活都经历了。无所谓了，真的是这样。但是我希望这个美国，不管是对于拜登阵营也好，对于这个川普阵营也好，一个事先按照法律定义的无欺诈的选举至关重要。这就是我想说的。嗯，您贵姓？哎，你叫我 Gary 好了。嗯，谢谢，谢谢。刚才也是有一些拜登的支持者在这边，呃，他们两方对阵呢，其实一直有一点小激烈的这种一个气氛在这儿。那么周围呢，已经聚了很多警察，这里就是以防有什么情况的发生。不过我们现在看到呢，虽然这个对峙很激烈，但是整体还是很和平的一个。呃，进行当中。那么现场呢，我们也碰到了很多的华人支持川普的粉丝。刚才也采访了一位呃华人的呃这个川粉，他说他其实不是说多么支持川普了，他是一个中立的立场，他是一个观察者的立场。那么因为他自己呢，在很多国家都生活过，所以根据他的这种生活经验来看，他觉得美国现在处于一个非常关键的临界点。因为他说，像这个欧洲啊、加拿大呀，之前都在这个
要向左还是向右走的这个临界线呢？选择了左走，那么川呃欧洲，比如说现在就很难再扭转回来了。但是美国呢，现在最后的机会就在这里了。我们看到呢，这边是，一边是川普的支持者，一边是拜登的支持者，双方在这里已经对阵了有，呃将近一个小时的时间了，一直在这儿互相说一些话呀，或者川普的支持者也在不断的唱歌和祈祷。那么虽然看起来呢有点激烈，但其实一直很和平。我们看到，其实川普支持者这呢，就是，呃，各种族裔的，什么背景的人都有。Supervisors demanding their their employees post date or predate their. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's the website. One hundred and thirty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred and thirty-eight. And three thousand for Trump. Yeah. Fourteen to one ratio. You don't get those kind of ratios even in the most this liberal. This normally never happen in that year. You know, Well, maybe in PG County. No, even not in PG County. PG, I'm from PG yeah, County. PG, oh yeah, well, PG, not, but that yeah. was 92 percent. So that's a. a, a 那么我们现在拍摄的这位女士，她手里举的这个 T 恤呢，上面就画了川普和拜登在这一次选举当中得票增长的这个指数曲线。我们可以看出，这个红色呢是川普，象征川普是一个比较平缓的上升，但是拜登呢是在突然的一个时间点直线上升，所以大家川普的这些支持者呢就非常怀疑这个选举的真实性，他们觉得说这种情况是不可能出现的。那么这个 T 恤呢，我们刚刚发现其实是呃一群这个华人的支持呃华人的川普支持者。今天刚刚印出来的，他们说他们今天上午的时候呢，印了两个小时，有两百件拿到现场来，免费的送给大家，因为就是想要发出这样一个声音。那么今天呢，在这个抗议现场也有很多的川普支持者过来，其中华人特别的多，还有越南人。那么我们看这边呢，有一个华人的团体在，越南人的团体在合影。
Epic Times? Yeah. Oh, okay. Can I ask you a couple questions? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Can you hold the microphone for me? It was fair. Donald Trump, uh, one Carolina, Nevada, and uh, we just want a fair count. If Biden wins, Biden wins, but, you know, it's a lot of them missing, you know, it's a very shady, shady situation. <laughs> so We're here. Oh, what was that? So the uh, Associated Press has called the victory for Biden. Well, the wealthy media, <laughs> liberal media, the Democrats have been buying them out for years. They don't... Uh, they don't tell the truth. We know CNN. They always stand up for the liberal, even if they don't know the facts. So, you know, we're just a uh, big media. <laughs> it really doesn't uh, doesn't matter. So how much of a role do you think those media play in this election? Well, they got a lot of grammar. Big lights, big, 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 a lot of noise, big lights, <laughs> a lot of big music. Mediatrics, you know, you stand up a... Uh, you put Biden up there, maybe with was lightning flashing behind him. And just hypothetical, you know, just make him look real good. They can make a make a cockroach look <laughs> great. <laughs> so why do you well, he's uh, he rebuilt the economy almost from uh, ruins four years ago. Uh, Obama really wrecked it on an affordable health care plan. His affordable health care act was only raised prices more, higher. Everybody. Everybody was paying more, unless you were dirt poor, you know, not working. It was a, it's a beautiful thing to be on disability, not just collecting a check every month, so you get your health care free there. But if you, as soon as you start working, making a few bucks a week, then your, your rates are much higher. And he, uh, he's trying to get rid of all that, and he uh, brought jobs, thousands of jobs, maybe millions by now. And he's doing a good job taking care of this uh, coronavirus, just uh, giving, just uh, preaching common sense, you know, uh, getting rid of. You're getting rid of all, all the fear tactics today. So how do you feel, you know, seeing supporters from two parties uh, confronting here? Well, stand up for what we believe, you know. There are going to be protesters on the other side. Like four years ago, the Democrats were doing exactly the same thing. They uh, they saw the Russians, <laughs> they said the Russians were... Uh, L-I-N-K, Baltimore. I'm sorry. I'm gonna leave it up. Okay. I saw you over there, like taking everyone to pray for America. So, what brought you to do that? Um, I mean, cause at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who our president is. We should all be proud patriots. Yes, we have a choice to make, and we make our choices. But that doesn't mean that we have to. Our our choices shouldn't be driven by hate. It should be driven by love and policies, honestly. So at the end of the day, whether Biden is the president, Trump is the president, I'm still a proud patriot. And us conservatives really just wanted to come out here and, 
and pray for the country. That was what that was all about. So you are here, you are here to pray for the whole country? Yeah, to pray for the whole, really to pray for the world, but expe uh, specifically America because I'm an American. Uh, so my opinion and from what I am knowing and seeing, I feel like it's a little rigged, but this wouldn't be the first time. So, you know, again, we're just waiting to see how the chips fall. Trump said he has a plan for us. I mean, you know, whether y'all like it or not, he's still our president technically. So we're just waiting to see how things turn out. Um, at this point, it's not up to me, so I'm kind of taking my feelings out of it, and I'm just waiting to see how things go, but hey, man, again, if, if Biden ends up being the president, then congratulations to our new president. So you are confident in America and the democracy here? I just want to see what's best for the country, and if Biden is in office, he has four years, maybe eight, to make sure that the country is right. I would just I would have appreciated it if we showed respect to our president Trump when he was elected. But you know, it's it's certain groups of people that just they just don't know how to do stuff like that. So I think it's the media. People say it's Trump, but I think it's the media that's really dividing us, that's making people do this. When I got the information to come out here, I was told that we were going to come out here and pray. And then when I came out here, I walked into a sea of Trump hate. So I don't know if this was a setup or something, but I mean, I asked a lot of people in my DMs right now on my Instagram that it's, they, they want me to be sad. They want me to be crying, but I'm happy because at the end of the day, America is winning. It's not about white, black, Republican, whatever. It's about it's about America. So if you love America, you should be happy with whatever decision it goes. But if you're cheating, if you are cheating, don't worry. There will be justice for that too. I'm Ron. You can follow me on Instagram. Ron J. Spike. Instagram, Twitter, anything. It's Ron J. Spike. Go look for me. Thank you.
Oh, yeah. They yeah. seem afraid of COVID. Yeah. It's like, no, they're like, six guys. They got them so scared, they won't go out of there. Get out of there. Oh, my God, put on the mask. It's the science. But he can't do that to the mayor of the district of Slump. All right? And they called everybody in, right? They called it the National Guard, they called it Border Patrol, they called it the, the Park Police, right? You know, the Pentagon Police, everybody, right? Because they said, you know, because President Trump said, as long as I am president, the nation's capital will not burn. And as soon as he took over the security of D.C., the ca you know, we Where's then had peaceful pain? protests. People were still able to protest. So I'm also going to say this. Nobody died. During the during the unrest in Washington D.C., people died in Richmond, people died in Atlanta, they died Portland. in Charlotte, they died in Portland, but nobody died in Washington D.C. And demonstrations still went on. P the liberty, the freedom to demonstrate was protected, By and, Trump. The, and the and, and the security of citizens was maintained, right? And not due to the mayor. The mayor took our National Guard out of the hotels. Yeah. National Guard who came yeah. all the way from Utah, came all the way from Texas. They were, all, they were being put up in D.C. hotels and the mayor of Washington, D.C. kicked them out and made them sleep on the streets. To, they were here to protect her city that she is responsible for. And now we have Mur Muriel Bowser will not address the problems of the District of Columbia. It is that simple. All right. I live in Southeast D.C. All right, it's Southeast DC, Ward 8, Marion Barry's old neighborhood, the poorest part of Washington DC, where we have the most, where we have the most drugs and the most crime and the most violence. Last week, a last week, a 16-year-old boy was shot dead 300 feet from my front door. And it barely made the news. It barely made the news. When the when the news van came by, when the news van came by, the only thing, they only sent a photographer, they didn't send a reporter. A 16 year old boy was shot and they couldn't even send a reporter. The only thing they wanted to report on was the fact that we had passed the number of murders this year than we had last year, right? DC is turning into Chicago where the names of murder victims are no longer reported. We just report numbers. And that is not what I want for my city. That is not what I want for my home. That is not what I want for my neighbors. And that is not what I want for me, right? The fact is, is that black lives do matter, but not to the city government of Washington, DC, right? They'll rename a street, they'll paint a, mur a mural on it. But when, you know, but when K2 and PCP are being sold openly, costing hundreds of lives every year, they will not send the police down to where the open drug markets are, right on Good Hope Road. We have open drug dealing on Good Hope Road in Southeast DC. Open drug dealing that kills hundreds of Washingtonians every year, overwhelmingly black Washingtonians, but the city has decided that their lives don't matter. And the city has decided that that is just part of, that's just business as usual. That's just what happens over there. Well, you know what? Thing problems remain if you decide that they're just what happens, right? If you decide that it's just going to be what it's going to be. No. Each life matters. The life of the of the 16 year old boy who got shot 300 feet from my front door. His life mattered, and his life should have been given priority. The lives of people struggling with drug addiction here in Washington D.C. Their lives matter. But instead, we do not have adequate services for them. We do not have re rehab services. We do not take law enforcement seriously to prevent the trade and the sale of these illegal drugs that are killing people. Uh, you know, and instead, emergency services, 911, is becoming the basic response mode to people who are suffering from drug overdose or mental illness. 911, ambulances and emergency rooms are not equipped to deal with that. Right? At the beginning of COVID-19, the mayor announced that she was releasing over a thousand DC prisoners from prison. And you know, I'm gonna say that is what it is. I'm not gonna pass any judgment on whether or not you should be there or not unless I've reviewed your case. But if you're gonna let people out of prison, what you should not do is set them up for failure. And what did she do? She closed the halfway house right as she was letting over a thousand people out of prison. Where were these people gonna go? Where were they gonna go? Right? 
we can spend, we have a trolley car. I don't know who around here in DC has seen our trolley car. Um, it runs for less than a mile. We have, nobody rides it, nobody likes it. And in the 2020 budget, I read it right there, in the 2020 budget, we have $119 million budgeted for a trolley car that runs for less than a mile, nearly $300 a foot per year to keep that thing running, and you can't even ride it for free, all right? Let me tell, and we already got a bus on the route, so don't act like people need that for he transportation. We got for a office. bus. Run I just run did. I just run did. Office. Let me take a break. Good Lord, they nearly beat the hell out of me down there. Be all the right. mayor. Be the mayor. Um, but the fact is, is that for if we shut down that trolley car, sold the car to Portland because they actually use them, and let's face it, a few of those have been burned, so they might need a replacement. Um, we could have $119 million. We could reopen our halfway house. We could reopen the battered women's shelter that we shut down. We could open a domestic violence shelter for men because there is not one in the District of Columbia. We could expand funding to our foster care services, double the number of firemen and EMTs in the District of Columbia, and restore the, co uh, the funding that we took from the police this year. What's your name? Uh, Isaac Smith, all without Isaac cutting Smith. a single other program. Isaac Smith, Isaac what? Smith. Like that's what I'm saying, Smith. right? Smith. We can have better services in the District of Columbia. We can treat our people in the District of Columbia better, right? And we don't have to raise taxes on anybody. We just have to spend the money where we're supposed to spend it. That's it, right? But instead, they would rather they'd rather grift and steal and give big kickbacks to their big political donors and they are willing to le let public housing projects be roach infested. They are willing to ta take former prisoners that they in an act of mercy release from prison. Hey, congratulations, you're out of prison. Now go sleep on the street. What is that for people? Okay, what does that say about how you treat people? Okay, we don't treat people good here in the District of Columbia. And we need to start treating people what good. What is because this mayor's name again? Muriel Bowser. And she is a? She is a proud Democrat who voted for Joe Biden, right? She is such a proud Democrat that she attempted to undermine efforts to maintain the safety of Washingtonians, right? Son, Son, Sun Tzu, the famous author of The Art of War, said the definition of a tyrant is someone who will burn down their own kingdom to rule over the ashes. And that is what we are facing. We are dealing with Trump. God, Emperor Trump. Yeah, 07 only.